Uh, you're mute. <laughs> okay, so we begin the session with you. Uh, the party has been uh, traveling. You went through Thorbad. You battled the ruffians. You had a weird interaction with the citizens of Thorbad. And then you had a very lovely discussion with a quite rude uh, elf who read the <laughs> writings on your three artifacts and let you know what they actually mean. So we I mean, begin by the elf session. standards, he was actually pretty pleasant. Okay. I did say he was pleasant. He was just rude. <laughs> uh, pleasantly rude. Depends on your definition of which manners you're paying attention to. <laughs> Like, uh, he's definitely friendlier than the Merkwood elves, I'll tell you that much. Oh, yeah. So, the fields before you, you can tell that no one has travel in these regions. You don't see a good path in the grass. The grass is tall, there's plenty of trees but it's definitely a field it is not a forest over to your uh left north of you you have the uh the glen uh no the uh, the glandoon uh river but the glandoon river has quickly turned into a swampy area you have walked a good several miles away from the elvish person uh, when we begin this session, and you see before you the tall, misty mountains which you are traveling towards with the Glenduin always to your left hand side. The path before you is not even, it is very rocky, and it, it's obvious that no one had the intention of preparing a path here. So as you are traveling, the wagon is going rickety rockety. Whoever's in the wagon is being thrown all over the place. Uh, the barrels is like bouncing up and down. You oh, Ronnie, see I'm going to have to upgrade the suspension on this thing. Exactly. The wheels are, are just bouncing along the way, and the horse is just loving the entire time as he uh, every now and then likes to nibble on the tall wheat grass that is surrounding you guys. Uh, tall wheat grass. Lots of tall grass around you. Remember that with the swamp just north of you. In fact, it is, it's become a little bit too close as apparently the muddiness is becoming a little bit more apparent. It's still rocky, but we begin the session with you noticing that you're starting to get into more wet territory or territory. We need all wheel drive. It's muggy. Ah, you they, uh, see clouds coming. The insects the are east. Very, very annoying. <laughs> ah, how'd you just say the size of that one? It was massive. Uh, hey DM. Yeah. May I use my alchemical flask to make bug spray? <laughs> No. Legitimate question. <laughs> no. No. Answer is no. Like, you, you, is there like a vinegar I can like sort of spritz into the air to you, try you, and get the bugs to go away? Actually, do that. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, you, is that you, a thing well, you're going to have me roll for? Or is there a thing you're just going to let me do? Um. Let's do a nature check first, just to see how well we know of the connection between vinegar and bugs. Mm -hmm. 
That will be a uh, 15. Oh yeah, you definitely know that uh, vinegar is is a good bug repellent. The question is, how do you use it? Um, which you can figure out a way in how to use the vinegar. <laughs> I'm going to ch I'm going to use the. Uh... Hang on, let me just check. Um... Uh, While he's doing that, go ahead and communicate with each other. And just so you know, Eli, you're still mute. Yeah. Uh, so I can make I can make it make two gallons of vinegar. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a swig of uh, the vinegar, like straight into my mouth, and I'm I'm going to spray it through my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, you can. Do what? Like, I'm going to take a swig of just solid vinegar into my mouth, and then I'm going to force it out of my mouth through my teeth to make, like, a spray. Okay, okay, <laughs> you, you start doing that on everyone. Yes. <laughs> uh, that's disgusting! <laughs> what are you doing? Knock it off right now! It works it all away, right? What? It sounds stupid, but it works. It's not stupid. Who said that? Wait a second. Wait, wait, everyone stop talking. Eli, start, start speaking. That's what I thought. There we go. But I now hear myself. Indeed. Uh, I forget what I was going to say. Never mind. <laughs> Are you feeling okay? Okay. It's just a little. Uh... Uh, yeah. Okay. Did you catch well, my uh, solution to I the bug? I also took my headphones off because they were warm and it was making me sleepy. So uh, I'm just gonna <laughs> unmute when I need to talk. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, continuing on. <laughs> that smells like vinegar now. Thanks to you, young hobbit. That was rather the point. But I mean, those, a swamp already smells awful before you start spraying vinegar everywhere. Yes, and vinegar smells more pleasant than the swamp, and now the bugs will go away. Are you sure about that? Point. If vinegar made bugs go away, I'm pretty sure I would have learned that. Well, he didn't ask you to make the check. He asked me to make the check. And that's yeah, I mean, what I got from the check. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine the ranger is like, we just tough it out. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hobbit likes his creature comforts. What can I say? Yeah, creature comforts. <laughs> <laughs> you just grow thicker skin. Splush, splush, That's what splush. we dwarves do. What's that yeah, sound? Do I... That's the sound of your feet. Oh, it's my feet. Sorry about that. I kind of forgot I was walking here. <laughs> well, I'm walking here. <laughs> Get out the way. I'm walking here. <laughs> You, you you look down and you realize that there's a thin layer of mud all over your boots. There's some the the uh, it's no longer rocky, dusty, or just normal earth. You are now in a slight swamp territory, and the wheels are like spinning, and you can see that the the outside of the wheels is getting slowly coated with mud. And mud is also being flung all over the place from the wheels. Mm. I wonder if Gary would be concerned or if he just doesn't care. Doesn't care. 
I have decided. I would <laughs> he doesn't care. care. I would definitely care. Uh, um, <laughs> if if someone with more brain right now would like to take over thinking for me, that would be appreciated. Oh, we have what? Smart Gary, who is not here. He's probably in the wagon or something. Yeah. Oh no, oh, smart. Wait, who is in the wagon? Smart oh, Gary. Gary. Mr. Sigmund. Uh, I, want, I want everyone that's in the wagon to do a constitution saving throw. Uh, I will and, gladly give you one of those. And, and I'll, I'll roll for you, smart Gary. <laughs> smart Gary is uh, perfectly all right. Here. I love that the identifying characteristic or attribute that may, sets me apart from the other one is intelligence. It's great. Everything else is the same. I, say that. Say that again. I didn't. I didn't hear yeah. you, there, Tim. What? One, three, thirteen on okay, the console. Good. Okay. For for a moment, you were having difficulties, but now I I got you. Okay. Yeah, this one doesn't like when people try to talk over each other sometimes, and it's especially the case in this call, I found. Well, well, it, it, it's weird because it didn't, it wasn't talking over, it actually silenced you. Yeah, uh, there's like a prioritization type thing, it's very silly. Okay. But 13, you are okay. See, it's not super bad, but it is incredibly uncomfortable. But yeah, the, the the mud is getting everywhere. Um, what time is it? It is uh, no, you you just had food. Okay, but is it approaching nighttime or is it midday or something like that? Well, it, it it's midday. Okay, just for uh, context, uh. Does Gary have any idea how big this swamp would be? Is that available knowledge, or is that something he just like he can't see? Um, let's see. Uh, did you could do? Uh, that would be more like a survival check. I think so too. <sighs> oh, a disadvantage. I think because I'm stupid. Do, do there is a particular ranger who uh, has a specialty in planes. And this is... You, you, you haven't gotten into true swampy territory yet. Six. Okay, okay. Well, the, the thing is, you see it... You don't see an end uh, to the swamp as you look beyond the horizon. And, I mean... <sighs> It gets better just around the corner. The swamp is gonna go on forever. Oh wait. Well, oh, with that attitude, certainly. I'm not sure. It looks like it goes on for ages. The sad part is that the map that you have did not label a swamp in this area. It just showed the river. Well, trying to adults, determine how smart those I am. With updated, the, the thing is, those who have updated maps do know there's a swamp here. Quite simply because the river has been low recently. Because mm. it's not a swamp. It's actually we're a actually low in, river. Yeah, we're, we're actually in the, in the low river. Mm -hmm. So there should be like a ford or something somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, so, uh, Sigmon does live a lot of his time, uh, on, like, uh, riverbanks and stuff by his background. Uh, like, uh, he, he likes going fishing. Uh, would mm -hmm. he be able to recognize this? Uh, you know, well, we'll just say yes. All right. Uh... Right. Uh, we're in the river. Uh, 
I'm going to refer to the map. Uh, is there a place uh, where, uh, like, we should be on a road if we're following the river, or are we just, like, sort of going along with what? no rhyme or reason? I thought this was a swamp. Uh, it's a low river. This is what a riverbed looks like when it's not... Oh, Eli has to go. He says, I have to prepare the house. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're signed for MTL to prepare the house. <laughs> but yeah, DM, what, what information would the maps give me as to, like, the pathing we're trying to take? Like, is there a road next to the river yeah. we're supposed to be following? Okay, so let me, uh, sh I wonder if I click the exit. I don't think that would, yeah, clo no, not close documents. Escape? Uh, escape and show. Okay, that way I can go back to this map. So this is the map you have, okay? It doesn't show you that there's a swamp area right here. It shows you the river and this path that you see, these are the, these are the roads. So you're on the south side. There is a road on the north side. But we don't want to be the way on the north side. Doom. But you're trying to get to Osin. Uh, you're trying to get down here. All right. Here to you're trying to get to this pass. Yeah. 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 And would the, I have any idea as to whether it's like the uh, like bank of the river is going to be more stable than the river bank? I'm assuming it would be, but I want to check. Uh, so, knowing this region right here, you, you can't really tell where the, the the river begins and ends on the sides. Okay, so it's pretty swampy on the banks as well? Yeah, and, and this general region, because you don't know if there is a bank. You do know, you, you do see the river. You, you see the river. Uh, so there's an actual river. You're not in the river itself. Okay, if we're in the swampy area where the river would be, then we are still technically in the river. We're just not in the watery bit. Exactly. Um, so my question with that is, uh, like, presumably the river isn't wide enough to be horizon to horizon, so would we be able to tell which way to go if we wanted to get, like, onto the river bank? Like, presumably so, we head south. The, the, the easiest thing that you can see that gives you direction is the Misty Mountains. Okay. Well then, let's go to the right along the Misty Mountains, uh, just going perpendicular to where we've been going, and get out of the river bend because that's clearly bogging us down, and I'm trying to resolve that issue. Okay. So as you're trying to get out of the riverbed, I'm assuming you're going south. Yes. We could also go north and just try to ford the river, but it has sounded like that is not normal. So we're going south. And as you start traveling south, all of a sudden, the, the, the horse is like, Trying to get forward and it's stuck. The horse is stuck or the cart is stuck? Yes. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so both are stuck. Mm hmm. All right. The, the cart is not moving for some reason. <laughs> but we're still in the river. Is that right? The horse you, you, is stuck the or the car the if, river. If the horse is stuck, that's a problem. Yeah, the horse itself is not stuck, but the cart is. Okay, that is what uh, I was asking. Okay, um, so uh, I will so offer to go battle, to the back and push. Unhit. Wait, 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 wait. Strong guy here, thinking with his muscles. He wants to help push and see if that helps. Okay. Okay, do a athletics check for me. There's no okay. trees on the riverbanks or anything, is there? No. 19. Okay. 19. You start pushing, and it's budging. It's moving. And it's just it's slowly moving. It, it, All right. It is moving, 
That is true. But there's a huge problem. Something doesn't look right. It doesn't sound the same. It doesn't sound like a... It, like something's rotating. It sounds like something is sliding. Are we having another broken oh. axle? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, a different issue. it's a different issue. Uh, you, no, are pushing, like you, you are pushing the cards. So, <laughs> Alright. This is a lot uh, harder I'm... than it should be. As he's doing that, I would like to investigate and figure out what the problem is that's causing uh, the uh, uh, wagon to be stuck. Because, like, if it's budging, then it's not just, uh, like, stuck on something that's, like, preventing it from, like, uh, rolling forwards. Like, okay. if the wheel's not turning, that's a problem. So I'd like to identify that. Okay. Um... <laughs> Perception check. Uh, wouldn't it be investigation? No, investigation deals with books. Interesting. That, I never thought about that. That doesn't sound right, but whatever. Natural 17 for a total of 18. Okay. Uh, describe to me how you're doing it. And, and I'll give I am the looking at the go. undercarriage as he's pushing and trying to figure out what isn't burning. <laughs> so that is out. investigation. Yeah, so you jumped out. You jumped out and you get into the mud and you get underneath the carts. Yes. Uh, the mud is getting everywhere onto you uh, because you're a little bit of a shorter folk. And you look underneath and you see that the mud is in all of the cracks. And then all the creases, and the wheel itself, it's like stuck, and it's just sliding. It's like the mud is just everywhere. So it's like hardened or just gummed up? Gummed up. Gary, right. well, help hardened. me push! Gary! Hey, guess what? I got another gallon and uh, three quarters. I'm going to use the rest of the vinegar in the jug to break up the mud. <laughs> and Gary's in the back. Like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm you're, curious. You're wee halfling. You're wasting your time. Push. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, DM. What did you say? Well, he was saying that. I'm curious to see uh, how you're gonna proceed with trying to clear up the mud or helping him out. <laughs> I literally just told you how I intend to clear up the mud. I am going to uh, break it up with the vinegar that's in my jug. Like loosen it up wow. so it washes off. Exactly. Just describe how. Just describe how. This is interesting. <laughs> like I am going to literally take my alchemical jug and like little. Uh, sort of uh, so dribble a bit in my hand and like sort of just, uh, just wipe away as much as I can and use the <laughs> alchemy like, and, and basically just uh, use it as a cleaning solvent. Okay, so you're like cleaning it on the <laughs> while Gary is, and, and Gary are both pushing the the wagon. It's like, uh, 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 Like, I, I'm not, I'm not really putting my hands on the part that moves, uh, so much as, uh, uh, pouring, uh, like, liquid over it. Because that will also break it up. But, uh, yes, that is, that is basically what I'm doing. I'm just, like, using vinegar as a cleaning solution to break up the mud. And I've okay. got almost two gallons to work with. So. Oh, yeah. So it, it takes you some time. You are breaking up the mud. You're also getting mud all over you as it's happening. But That is of infinitely less priority. But with time, suddenly the mud stops coming at you, and the, the mud is being broken up, and eventually you find yourself on solid ground once again. All the mud is gone. It's all on the three of you, so you three are covered in mud. But at least the vehicle is not covered in mud, and the vehicle is once again working properly. <laughs> I stamp my okay, boots to get Okay, you said we're on solid ground, so like we're out of the muddy patch now, and we can like... You're out of the swamp. 
Ah, that felt good. I haven't had oh, something that heavy to push in a while. I think it's time for some raccoon jerky, Gary. Let's have a snack. <laughs> there, there were so, some issues regarding like uh how that scene was described but like i'm i'm glad we were able to get it resolved well now suppose i have to wash myself off no any flowing water around here benevolent voice in the sky <laughs> Uh, as he mm, breaks the fourth wall the and asks water. the DM. <laughs> oh, the, the flowing water is back in the body. Yeah, people going north. You, you, you hang on, hang on. The river. Let's keep traveling for a day. I have a solution for this as well. Okay. <laughs> he has so, uh, prestidigitation. No, better. I've got an alchemy jug. <laughs> <laughs> So we can just, like, wait till the Smelly next bigger. day, and then I'll have 12 gallons of salt water that I can use to help us take a shower. Oh! Oh, smell like the ocean. So, you guys do that, and for the next couple of days, uh, you're using the alchemy jug, and you're using it in ingenious ways to help you out, not only with the, the vinegar to get rid of the bugs, but also to help wash you, because the, the river's too far away. And, oh my goodness, it took you ten days to finally get past the swampy area. And, lo and behold, now you you see okay. with that river How big bent, was that swamp? Because it shouldn't have been more than the like swamp a mile goes, so. The swamp goes from Old Bridge all the way to where you see that bend. Okay, but like how far down does it go? Because like we were traveling laterally to get out of that problem. So you were traveling laterally, and as you, you noticed that the river was getting closer and closer to you guys as you're staying on solid ground, and uh, eventually it disappeared, and now you have the river right there. You, there's an actual riverbank. There's no swampiness. It is right there. Okay, yes, but like... How did it take us 10 days to do that, though? There shouldn't have been that much swamp between solid ground and that if it was along the riverbed. It was a 10-day long swampy area. <laughs> That's ridiculous. It so, is ridiculous, just... but the, 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 the swamp map I looked at did cover that entire area. This is a 30-day trip. Hmm. It's you know the dead marshes would have taken a really long time for the hobbits to get through, and we see yeah, a really blurry glimpse of it. Not a riverbed. Sure. Well, crazy stuff happens. This is Middle Earth. <laughs> Whatever. It's still faster than just slogging through the riverbed the whole way. <laughs> but ten days have passed, so use of ten days worth of resources in order to get past and finally you are near the river once again and there's no swampy area but i'm gonna have everyone do a constitution saving throw for me oh. did i ask against mm. what you won't know uh i have I advantage on one condition so I'll let you know if it comes oh, up. What's it? What's it? What's the condition? Poison. No. Okay. And I, you? I, I rolled a five. I five. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So some days pass, and by the time like a couple of days have passed, and. You're at your halfway point. The mountains are getting bigger. And uh, it's obvious that you're traveling towards the mountain. You and the other Gary started to get slightly sick. Uh, oh, not my Gary, but, but uh, Sigmund and other, other Gary? Gary. Okay. Yeah, other 
Yeah, Sigmund and other kids start to get a little bit sick. In that, you start to get a fever. You, you can just feel a, a, a fever coming. If you want, you can do either a medicine or a nature check. Anyone who wishes to do it. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, that's poison, too. Can, uh, I, uh, uh, can I assist Sigmund in doing a check? Because I'm assuming he's a lot smarter than I am. Yeah. So uh, you, you have advantage. The check is for medicine? Either, either medicine or nature, I'll let you choose. My nature is a lot. That I have advantage? Mm -hmm. 21. 21, fantastic. Yes, it is true that you sprayed vinegar on yourselves, but when, when you look, you... you this it's not the first time you have seen someone have a high fever of this type of sorts it's like you are from the shires like a lot of people work in the fields and all it takes is one mosquito to bite you might have gotten you when you were asleep oh but... no we got a bola <gasps> oh what's that virus well you, you are well knowledgeable to know that, okay, one of those bugs in a swamp has something to us. What is it, Sigmund? I don't understand. Why are you so hot? Bug bites. What? These the little things? How do they make you hot? I don't understand. Make you sick. And you get oh. hot trying to fight off the sick. Oh. You need water? Can we put you in the water? You, you, uh, because you has seen this before and you uh have seen people uh adults properly uh apply what needs to be done in order to help someone a little child to had a bug bite that led to a fever you know exactly what you need to do in this scenario what do we need to do in this scenario I don't know, because I've never got a bug bite before, and that led to a fever. <clears throat> you either uh, let it burn uh, up. Oh, how Benadryl pills aren't necessarily a thing in uh, Middle Earth. Um, so, yeah, exactly. So you can let it burn up, but if it's a really serious illness, that will kill you. Um, you need nutritious food, you need a place to stay where you're, you're sheltered from the elements, you can't get cold at all, you need to be well hydrated. Um, yeah, like generally traveling while recovering from an illness is a bad idea. So this is exactly what we don't want. And it's the thing that we put in precautions to avoid. So I'm kind of surprised that we still got it. I'll put you on the cart so that you don't have to walk. Uh, and that'll help. Uh, and then... I was kind of already there. But, oh. uh, yeah. Well, um... Because my walking speed is slower still. I guess that's the scent... The sentiment's what matters. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Do, do we have anything in the bag that could help? He's kind of just appealing to somebody who's smarter than him. But I will explain what Dan thinks. Dan believes that if we still have antitoxin, we could apply that. Possibly. Does the end... I, I don't know the language of the antitoxin here, because the thing is, 
There's a difference between poison and disease. There is. Does the antitoxin also help with disease? Well, well if it was hmm. poison, I would have had an advantage on the save, and we probably wouldn't have been in this mess. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for what antitoxin would do, because in real life, it would probably be more like anti-venom or anti- yeah. like, like uh, or a cure for poison. But toxin is a different kind of thing. Um, it's usually stuff you ingest. And so if you were to ingest something that was toxic, you would need to get it out by vomiting okay, or something okay. like that. Yeah. So in, in this scenario, uh, we're not going to get too heavy in the weeds of the actual word and the proper definition. We're going <laughs> to muddy the water a little bit and also apply a thing known as magic, uh, <laughs> where it also affects poison and not just toxins. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, see, it's also in, in a poison this, thing. In, in this scenario, no, it's not a poison. It's a disease. In this scenario, oh. this is why we need our ranger friend present in the D and D session. Well, he would know that if we had King's Foil, that would be an option for treating things, but it would be a, it'd be possibly a swing and a miss. It's possibly a swing of a, and a miss, and he is I with you guys, as gave, he says. I don't think we actually gave all those idiots our king's foil. I think if no, you... Uh, you still, you still we, have we king's foil. Stuff. We didn't give them all of it. Make it king's foil tea. Yeah, you, the ranger friend says that king's foil is not a cure-all, but it may still it. help. Hmm. And King's Foil is rampant in the Shire. So my Hobbit friends. Yes. And, and I'm talking I'm talking as the as a ranger. When when the little children uh get a high fever, do you use the uh King's Foil to help treat it? I know the end, do I? I mean do you? Yes. I'm asking I'm you. You're, yes. It's on I, you to I, know I, that stuff, I, I'm letting you say yes if you want to. Yes, I I, I think that sounds entirely reasonable. Because <laughs> if it was okay. not for oh, Barrow, that's like fascinating. This, that would be nearly as that's after. fascinating. <laughs> See, I always learn something new. So how do you prepare it, then? The salve. Uh, yeah, Either. Um. Uh, so... Uh, I think, uh, like, uh, in response to, uh, like, this particular sickness, uh, I'm going to take, uh, probably, uh, like, uh, five to ten of my king's leaf and, uh, sort of, uh, use a mortar and pestle and mash it up into a paste and then sort of spread that spread that paste on my chest like it's a uh, dayquil or something. Are you going to okay. boil it, mash it, and stick it in a stew? Uh, no, I'm going to paste it up and uh, spread it on my chest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mustard He's uh, got a patch. patch. And, and, and all of a sudden, Smart Gary like opens up his shirt a little bit to expose his hairy chest. <laughs> okay, how, 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 how many leaves would you say this would take? Um, it may be, uh, if you're going to make a small paste and it's smearing it on the chest, four leaves per person. Four leaves per person? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll mark it down. Okay. Uh, nah, it's coming out of my stash this time, because you already gave yours away, remember? Oh, that's right, I only have three and a half leaves left. <laughs> 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 it's very specific. I mean, it, 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 if you want to give me three of those, uh, I can be back up to 25. All right, have three leaves. I will s sit here with one half of a leaf. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> so, as you treat yourself, you the, 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 the fever doesn't go away, but becomes manageable. And you know for a fact that it's going to take some time for the fever to break and go away. 
but you're not gonna die. Uh, all you gotta do is make sure you drink water, that you don't sit in the rain, that you eat healthy food, maybe not heavy food, because that might cause you to vomit. But so just, basically like, take just care of yourself. Standard, basically standard, uh, like, fever treatment. Exactly, standard fever treatment. This might last, uh, you, it, it may not last very long, if you stay in rest, but it may last longer if you continue traveling. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to cause you to keep on moving and bouncing, which won't bode well for your stomach. Mm -hmm. And your ability to sleep. Because there, is, there still is no road, so it's still a bumpy ride. Hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure our ranger guy would be watching for enemies, as we're in unfamiliar territory off the road. But he's not here to think of that idea, so I wanted to suggest it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he is providing security for you guys. And it's like, during this entire journey, you have not met or come across any <laughs> fell creatures or anything. It's like... <laughs> All of you come across with your typical fauna of the open plains, like deer and boar, raccoons, and <laughs> birds. And now that you're near the river, there is fish, but no wargs, no uh, creatures that you should be avoiding at all costs. It is peaceful. Hmm. Do you think it okay, possible so... for... Do you think it possible for... Forgive me for asking, but do you think it possible for dumb Gary to do some foraging while we're here? To keep to keep to keep the to supply the soup and everything and whatnot? Oh for me maybe to do for it? the sake What? Sure. Yeah. Uh maybe for the sake of people, hey Dawson, are you willing to fill in as one of the characters? Which which one? That's the question. You can fill in as the ranger. Hmm. Uh, you, okay. you don't have to do any rules. We'll do them for you, but just role play wise. All right. I don't know this. I, I don't know. I don't know this ranger character well enough, unfortunately. Literally, just pretend to be Eli. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Eli's character well enough. It's okay, Dawson. Don't you know. could, like, if, so, like, if you want to, you can just suggest effect. ideas. See, see, don't worry. Sigmund is so delirious at this moment that whatever you act as, that is what he is viewing you to be. <laughs> oh, so it's like fever no. Dream. Okay. Oh no. So, looks like I'm going to have. To, looks like I'm going to have to figure out how to. Prepare to get some soup. Okay. So, so we, got, we got we got it we got a we got a forge and we got a we got to get some. Oh boy! I just what kind of soup do you want to make? Well then, are we making cat soup? No. What are the animals we have available again? We Lucky. have raccoon jerky and whatever we can catch. I've got raccoon okay. jerky right here. You want some? Jerky <laughs> is generally not a soupy meat, though. Yeah, that's not that's not the one we that's not the stuff we want. Oh. Are there like pheasants around here or something? The I'm not problem sure. with Felden. <laughs> but they taste like the chicken. The problem with Felden is. While you guys are having this conversation, uh, I, I rolled a survival check for Felden myself, since I got dice right over here, and uh, he rolled a nat one. Oh no. The, the, the problem is Felden, if you look upon close inspection, he's a little bit red on his face. Oh no. Hang on, hang on. Oh, hang on. did you ever go through Poison Oak? No. It's almost as if maybe Felden also has a just a slight fever. Hey DM. 
Yeah. Will you let, since fishing is mostly going to be like sitting and waiting for something to nibble, will you, like, and we're right by the river, I, I'm a fisherman. Do you allow it? Oh, definitely. I would like to go fishing while I wait for my in, my, my could, illness to resolve itself. We could go trolling and just have the cart slowly move down the path. <laughs> uh, I don't think that's going to be optimal for actually. No, it would not work at all, but it's funny. <laughs> I feel completely out of my depth, I'm not going to lie. Don't worry, that's because you have a slight fever. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, you have man. them sitting down. You, you have uh, them sitting down next to uh, Sigmund to help him out with fishing as well. Well done. You seem to have little red spots on your face. What's the matter? Uh, looks like okay. it's it. It feels like zits. Some of them. Oh, gross. I thought you were like 35 or something like that. Alright, in that case, since I'm fishing, I'm gonna roll survival with advantage. Okay. That will be a... A hey, what? Say in that here. again. You got cut out. 22. 22? Well, good. here's the That's fantastic the thing. Uh, so... With the 22, we're going to say that you capture it. It's like you, you, you hunker down, you stayed until with everyone, your, your fever broke. It took you two days. So you stayed overnight. Next day, finally your fever broke by the end of the day. Uh, by the end of day number two. And you caught yourself, not 22, but 22 per day, 44 trout. Whoa. Nice. Time to make some fish soup. Just toss them back in the water. And like one trout is good enough for like feeding two people, I imagine. Nice. <laughs> nice. So we think so we so you think we can actually use some of this to fish soup or whatever? To <laughs> get <laughs> You're the ranger, you should know this. <laughs> like uh, I said, I'm not I'm not used to playing this capacity, so I don't. Don't worry. Uh, as a hobbit who enjoys cooking and fishing, uh, you will be uh, in just the right company to help you out with this. Exactly. Gary suggests that you just get a pot of water and put the fish in it, and you don't do anything to the fish, and it's fish soup. <laughs> See, uh, that's what, okay, this is one thing I know that's not going to work. We have to, like, literally cook the fish. <laughs> if we're going to put the fish in the pot, we have to boil the well, water. Think about it. Think about it, though. It's fish uh, in a broth. It's fish soup. Yeah. That, that <laughs> input will be uh, cheerfully acknowledged and then ignored. <laughs> so your, your ranger friend is at least smart enough to know that... Maybe there's more things you should do. So he goes off and collects while you guys are, are preparing before you hit the hay and then continue traveling. He goes out and then he comes back with some good old game from some pheasants that he hunted. Ooh. You got some more Oh, mushrooms. so he didn't roll one this time. He didn't roll one this time. Uh, you got some mushrooms off of him, some edible mushrooms that you know you can eat. In fact, there are big uh, cap mushrooms, uh, which uh, in our native tongue is uh, portobello mushrooms. Uh, but uh, uh, he, he comes back with a whole bunch of those, okay. and okay. he he also has a couple of eggs from the pheasants. So some pheasant eggs, some pheasants some mushrooms, and he also, with regards to vegetables, came back with some onion and potato that he saw growing here and there that he just pulled out of the ground. So the okay, whole time we, that's happening, Gary is we being- We the onion and potato for the stew pretty handily. The whole and, time, and Gary all... is being horribly annoying by grabbing random plants and shoving them in Sigmund's face like, well, this work as a spice. And Sigmund's like, no. And he grabs another, how about this one? No. How about this one? No. And he just keeps doing it for like 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, at, at a certain point, uh, Sigmund will probably take a crossbow bolt and uh, just hold it in front of his face as he's doing this. 
like <laughs> idly hoping it that he's uh, going to catch his hand on the tip, but mostly just making a kebab. <laughs> <laughs> but Sigmund, you have all the supplies you need. You don't need to do any rules or whatnot. You can make whatever you want, and you also you have uh, uh, your alchemy jug. And did you guys get salt? Uh, I, I can make salt with my alchemy jug. Oh, you can make salt with your alchemy jug. There nice. you go. Like it, it can produce some, several gallons of salt water, and we can boil the water away. There you go. So the 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 one thing I can think of that we that I know we need for cooking, we need fire. We need we need like wood or something like that. You got fire. <laughs> You're not rolling that. You got fire. <laughs> you got a bonfire. Yeah, exactly what you need. Right. Is it daytime or is it nighttime? Uh, it's nighttime. Right. Well, it, it's I have close green. to nighttime. Yeah, okay. green. Uh, let, let me check. Uh, it doesn't specify that it's cooking grease, and it just covers the ground. Thank. It's cooking uh, grease. Well, I, we'll I was thinking that. it would be more like an oil slick, but like, if you want to let me use the grease spell as like mayonnaise or something, that'd be hilarious. Well, you do have mayonnaise as something you can make as well. Yeah, true. Um, not exactly the thing for what I'm going for, though. Um, ah, you, you, you're deep frying. Nah, nah. Like, uh, we're going for, like, on-the-road stuff, not restaurant spec. Exactly. Uh, the, the on eggs, the road. So, uh, if you'll let me talk. Um, the eggs sorry, are no. most likely to spoil first, so uh, th those are definitely going in the cooker and just, like, uh, getting uh, boiled, uh, maybe scrambled a bit. Uh, most of them are getting boiled, though. Uh, nothing like a good hard-boiled egg. Um, the... Uh, rest of it, the pheasant, the fish, uh, like, how much pheasant did he get? Uh, he got five. Nice. All right. So, uh, probably take, uh, about five and five of the pheasant and fish and some of the potatoes and, uh, onion, and I'll throw that all in a stew together. Just, like, sort of, uh, chop it up, boil it, and let the sort of juices of the meat sink in with the veggies. Uh, like, let it all flavor each other. Um, and, uh, checking out the alchemy jug, uh... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I need to use my alchemy jug for this. Uh, I mean, I don't need to, but uh, th th that's for a later thing, I guess. Um, uh, basically, I'm just going to make a nice stew with, like, most of what we've got on hand that will, like, uh, spoil rapidly and like for the rest of it i'm going to smoke it mm. nice bit of yes. smoke um so uh that'll be like uh, about 40 instances of smoke trout in total yep beautiful so you go through the nights, you have prepared all the foods uh, that you need for the future travels. Uh, and it's the next morning. I think we're not through the raccoon jerky, so this is going to be pretty darn good in terms of... Exactly. Uh, so, you wake up in the next day. It, this All of this travel adds up to around 12 days worth of traveling, okay? Uh, because you had the swamp traveling, and then you had the the downtime to recover from the fever, and now it is day thirteen, and you look and you know you're halfway there. Misty mountains before you, the river 
is right next to you. I, I still don't know why we wa bothered going into the swamp in the first place. I think it was supposed Absolutely. to be just kind of an accident. We stumbled in. Yeah, exactly. It was pro it was one of those things. Yeah, well, we wouldn't some have some stayed the, in there the, for the long grass, enough. Some of the grass the hid the mud, I bet. Some of the grass hid the mud. Tall grass. Yeah, that's what he had said. Yep. All right. All right. But you guys have fully recovered. You are well prepared. And from here on out, it seems like it's smooth sailing. As We're you at continue... At the foot of the mountains? Uh, no, you are located... You see where the O is? The O in Austin, Ed, Ed you, Hill? You, you are, you're halfway there. Oh, okay. For some reason, oh, I don't know oh, why, oh. every week, oh, your pointer seems to be on a different part of the map than we're actually trying to indicate for me. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Oh. That, that's weird. It is. It's it's considerably okay. off so far that I can't tell where you're really pointing. But now I know. Mm. Okay. So, as you guys are traveling, some more days pass, and you get to a point where the river splits in half. So when you look at this, oh. you, you, the, the, yeah, the, there's a point where the river splits. As soon well, right, as the river right splits, here, right here above the right above the IN in Austin End Hill, exactly. And as soon as you get past that area, you see what looks to be some ruins uh, in between the two rivers. And if you look beyond, it seems like the ruins goes all the way to the mountains. They're on the other the side. The the they're on the other side of the, the mountains. Mountains. Yeah. They're on the other all side the way of the to the mountains. Okay. They're on the other side of the river from from Austin End Hill Pass. We're on the north side like. of it. Yeah, on the north side of the bigger branch of the river. So, I would not recommend going in there. That that would probably we'd probably get lost in that in that whole maze. My brother what, uh, is from Moria. He lives in Moria. We could go through it. I don't trust it. I. Gandalf I specifically said not to go that way, if I recall. Yeah. Um. I was. I do not think it'd be wise to go through those ruins at this point. But, but the ruins are what leads us to the pass we're supposed to take. Are they? I, that, that's what the map indicates. If I recall, but I remember looking at the map, and it's and it looked like the the ruins were on the north side of the river, whereas the Austin Angel Pass is on the south side of the river. Well, no, no. Uh, we're on the south side of the river right now. Are the ruins on the north or the south? DM? Yeah. Uh, the the ruins is on the north side of the south. Then we don't worry about going to the ruins. Exactly. Yeah, in those, Austin uh... Endo Path on the south. In Austin Endo Path on the south side of the river. Isn't the pass on the south side of the river or no? That's my understanding yes, of it. it's on it's on the south side of the river. Yeah, I don't think we should go through there just because it, we don't we would involve crossing the river, and I don't see a bridge yeah, at the moment. No one is suggesting no. going into the ruins. Okay, good to keep track of though. We could go can further north to Moria. You know, we don't have to go through these ruins. We've already shot that idea down. The the, the gray-haired man said no. We listened to the gray-haired man. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, and he goes into an explanation of why he we should go through Moria. You know what, <laughs> smart Gary, uh, do a history check for me. Uh, and are you the smart Gary? That I'm... is your race the one that does like an advantage with the ghost to like stone cutting or whatnot? No, that would be uh, that would be Levi's character. I'm the unintelligent, unwise one. Okay. Which one? Did, which check was it? History. History. Okay. Well, he's gonna be bad at that. He's got a minus two. 
Uh, 11. Wow. Okay. That's pretty high for him. So, you are slightly familiar with the history of Cause of Doom, uh, Moria, and its connection with uh, uh, Arabom, I think it was called, or Aragor. Aaron Gore. And that the Elvish Legion the of Aaron Gore uh, and the Elvish city of Osanadel. See, the thing is, it wasn't just a small area, it was massive. It was so massive that, yes, there is that past that is there. But these ruins that you see going all the way to the mountain. This must all be us and Adele. So the, the whole thing is the past? No, the past is part of us and Adele. Oh, and so... Adele is not the past. Everything you see mm. between the two rivers going to the mountains, that's Everything all us and Adele. It's the British Empire. <laughs> so, so we, so we're gonna have to, so we're gonna have to go through Austin Indale at at a certain point in order to get through that pass. Mm -hmm. Question is, where do we enter it? We in, we it's clear that I we think can't. We're already we, in it, given how we're like just on the in on the map. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I don't see what choice fine. we have. The wizard said we can't go through Moria. At the same so time, we... the two dwarves, you get like an odd, weird sense. Almost as if you can hear, I mean, you're dwarves. You can hear the, the like a slight uh, uh, chance that is coming from the ruins. Almost as if they're coming out to the very stones themselves. Oh, Although it's in a time you do not understand. It's an elvish. Oh, it but sounds it's like. It's almost as if. Yes. There are elves in the, in the rocks. Do you hear that, Gary? Very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Mm, yeah, so the floor here is made out of floor. Don't play silly, there's no floor here. This is the ground, where were you born? This so is the ground, Austin, not the floor. So, Seed, let me be clear. Austin in Austin Ed Hale is on bo is now is now on both sides of that lower river branch, right? No. I'm trying to figure out where it is, where the boundaries of it are, and where we are in relation to that. Once you get into the mountain range, it stretches, because there's a road that goes north and south of uh, Osendel. The, the north road goes to Cause of Doom slash Moria, and the south road goes to your connection to eventually connect with uh, the lands of humans, but also the name of uh, Odell. Okay, so we go. So we're getting onto that road, right? Yeah. So we need to go through Austin and Deal at Heel, over the mountain pass to Nimrodell, and then we can swing north uh, after a little while through the, mm -hmm. the Merkwood. So we we need we need to cross this pass. We have no other option. We just have to go. Right. Through. Right. I'm just trying to figure out where we are in relation to that. That path. We are just below the end uh, currently. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. We're, we're like at the fork in the river, according to DM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yep. So the, the thing is, the mountain pass is like over here. Okay. So you don't have to cross the river or anything. You just keep it to your uh, left hand side until you finally get to the mountains and just like skirt the mountains until you find the pass. Mm, that works. But I would, but I would, I'd still be, I'd still keep on the lookout for danger. There is a, something tells me that there is a lot of nonsense going on here that we don't want to get caught up in. I mean, uh, Sigmund would probably have heard plenty of uh, stories from the, uh, like, travels Bilbo had uh, about there being nasties in the Misty Mountains. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't surprise. Wouldn't surprise me. We better. We Watch better out for guard as we... Oh yeah. Orcs. And goblins. Lots of goblins. Could be, could be orcs in the mountains. Seen them myself. Yeah. Plain one or two so in it... past life. So with uh, this caution. As we're sticking pass. with uh, goblins and orcs being more or less interchangeable unless we're talking to Uruks, right? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. And unless is. you're talking about the more human looking orcs, uh, which were connected with uh, the white wizards, most of the goblins are like mountain dwelling. Like, it's like there's a slight difference between the two, but not a big difference. Okay. <laughs> Right, well, last I understand it, there's still plenty of goblins in the Misty Mountains. So yeah, as time passes, and you guys walk and also ride the carts, uh, skirting the river, using the river also in case you ever need to, to like wash yourself or whatnot, um, you, you constantly get that sense of eeriness from the runes on the other side of the river. Eventually, the river starts to peter out and die, and uh, it's like you're going up, okay? You're getting closer to the mountains and it's getting higher in elevation. And eventually the river starts to thin out a little bit. Uh, it's easy to cross if you ever get the desire to do so, but the ruins now start to come on the other side. There's some ruins over here as well. Uh, not big ruins, but like lesser ruins. Almost as if that there were some people who were saddling down here, and almost as if there was like giant structures up against the mountain that fell down here. It's like, it's just a lot of rocks, uh, and a lot of boulders and what can appear to be some type of building at one point but uh, you are starting to get uh closer to the mountains as you noticing that the ruins are now in front of you well if we have to go Shing. through those ruins to get, get to get to get to the mountain pass it's just we try and Try and look only for the mountain pass and try and steer clear of as many structures as we can, looking for the roads through these structures. That's good advice. That sounds like wise. Yeah. Yeah. Steer clear of as many of the structures as we can and we just stay on the roads through the struck through this whole mess. I will be armed as we walk through. So uh, yeah, should... like uh Sigmund's crossbow will probably be held at low ready. Yeah. So you know that the pass is south of you. You can start going directly south with the ruins to your left. Not going into the ruins, but keeping an yeah. eye on them. Let's do that. As, yeah, as you're do. doing that, you're, you're around, if you look at the map, you're, you are around like the L. At the, the straights of the L as you're going down the L. It's like, imagine that's like the path you're taking. Mm -hmm. But suddenly, it's like several days have passed. By the time you get to the midway point right here, uh, it's been some smooth sailing. So it's only been like nine days, okay, since you've done that. So it's a cumulative of 21 days. But on that ninth day of the travel, Something odd. It, it sounds that you have not heard in a while. Nothing. Are we in the mountains Ooh. right now? You're not in the mountains. Suddenly the birds stop. The animals Ooh. stop. There's now a eerie quiet. Why is it so quiet? If the, if, how much you want to bet that there's more more undead or something around here. Yeah. Well, given the proximity of the ruins, uh, definitely a not zero chance. Let's keep an eye out. Yep. I don't think our friend in yellow boots is going to be able to help us out with this one. Right. I need you all to roll a perception check for me. 
That is, you, 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 it's like something is not right. Six. <laughs> Six. <laughs> Thirteen. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> but the ranger and Sigmund, because you're actively, you know something's not right, you hear, off in the distance, a galloping noise. And then when you look at this, as you see black figures, it's a little bit far off. Oh. But it's, a, it's a group of black figures on horses coming towards you. And you can kind of hear, it, it's very faint, but it sounds like a high-pitched screeching noise. Oh, boy. No. And it's like, it almost appears as if they had come through the mountain pass. And are now heading north. Are Let's they... Get going to intercept us? Okay, uh, so... They so seem to be on the direct path towards, towards you us. guys. We can see them. Can they see us? Does it seem like that? It doesn't seem like that. It, 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 it seems like they are not really going towards you, but that their path may intercept with yours. Okay, in that case, let's change our path so that they don't run into us off the road, uh, quick! Frodo yeah, would say yeah, that. Yeah. In the direct, in the direct, in the, re in the direction on the south side of the road, I think. If there's something... I don't think we're on a if, road, actually. So, yeah, quick, quick pointing something out as Dan here. There is absolutely no way in all of Middle Earth that we fight these guys and survive. So do not stand and fight, okay? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't want to still stand ruins. The, you, you still have ruins that you can hide in. You're in open plains, but you have the ruins that you can hide in. Yeah. Is this um, day uh, or night? It's day. In that yeah, case, let, let, let's, take... let's head to the. Wait, the ruins let's are take... across the river. No, no, they're not. Uh, because you as you've been traveling down the path that is the L and Edhill, there are ruins that is up against the mountains that you have been skirting. It's like you can see the ruins to your left as you're heading south now. Mm -hmm. yeah, just make for the nearest think... ruins. It doesn't really matter where they are. Yeah, just just make just make for the yeah. nearest ruins and try and stay. Try and. Try and keep out of sight of them, but of the party that's coming, but you don't want to go too far into the ruins either. So we try yeah. and so, so to... try and stay out, try and stay, try and get in a position where you where you can see the party that's coming, but they can't see you. So Indeed. they are not actively looking for you, but you still want to be slightly stealthy. So roll a stealth check for me. I just rolled mine. I got a ten. You go into the ruins, and eventually they do catch up, and they gallop past you. One of them turns their head towards you. You just get a, a shiver down your spine. It's like, it looks like he's looking right at your soul. It is a black clad uh, man with a... I can't remember what what do the the ring wraiths look like. It's the it's one. They've of the got hoods rates. on. They've got full yeah. black cloaks. You can't see their face I, very well. Yeah. They've got so like one, pointy gauntlets on their hands, yeah. and that's basically all that you can really tell in that they are like probably wearing something akin to full plate, but you're not going to see it under their cloaks. Exactly. So you get that perfect description pitch black they one of them looks at you but you're not their target so they go yeah. past you but that one that looked at you oh boy did, did you not feel good it's like oh, it, it was like sheer terror came over you upon seeing them but as soon as they get away the fear condition goes away as well hmm. uh, so it was hey, a temporary DM. fear condition hey dm yep 
Yeah. Is there a saving throw for that, or it just it just happened? You know what? Let's do the saving throw. As in, if you succeed, you felt it, but it you you overcome it. I got in that one. Because okay. <laughs> I'm a hobbit, all the same. So what did I? What did my character roll? You you said eight, okay. Uh, and your character, your character is pretty good. The other Gary was also really good, but unfortunately, Sigmund and uh, well, Sigmund was slightly terrified. Like I said, it was ever so brief. It came in the wit. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, your not so smart uh, Gary friend had an at one, so he was absolutely terrified. Like, oh, I'm getting out of here, and he he bolts into deeper into the ruins, away from his friends. Oh. Oh no, we have to go after him. We have got to go after him. Um. Hmm. Hey, DM. Yeah. May I cast Grease to trip him up as he's trying to run away? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Is that dex uh, save? Uh, Dan, I'm going to need your character to make a dex save. All right. Man, oh. I don't know what you all would do without me. You got a 17. Wow. Mm, that, that'll pass the save, sadly. But while he's crossing the grease path, he starts to calm down. Yeah, like ha having to like take it slow and like tread carefully is probably enough to like focus him. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> what was I scared of? <laughs> what? I'm sorry, guys. I I don't know what came over me. I was scared. Ring race. How do you know what they are? What are those things? I could feel them stirring into my soul. You know what? I'll do a history check for uh, our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he had a similar... He, yeah. In the same way Aragorn knew that those were ring weights, so does our other ranger friend here. He's never seen them, but he knows what they look like because... The Witch King, who slaughtered the Dunedain, of which the Rangers descend from. The Witch King was also a ring wraith. Mm -hmm. So, from the basic description of legends, passed down. of legends passed down, the Ranger knew these were ring wraiths. Mm. Yep. Especially the terror that the Dwarf felt. It's like... That's something ring rates do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys find yourself in the ruins. Okay? Not not too deep in it. Just just like ever so like in it. It's like imagine like there's like one, two buildings that is separating you from the like a block that is separating you from getting out to the ruins area and it doesn't feel bad it's just eerie but there's like you got like a sense of calm it, it just something doesn't feel right but you don't feel threatened it just feels empty well i'd still recommend perhaps perhaps archaeologists can come here later but right now, it's best we're we're not equipped with that. It's just better we get it back on the road. It's now that those ring rates and their party are gone. I'm sorry, archaeologists. Like you're a couple ages uh, early for that one, my guy. Well, whoever the people are that study ruins, those are the guys who need to be out here doing that. Indiana Jones. Uh, I don't think people do that really. <laughs> we this we belongs don't in a museum. 
the people What's a the museum? People... <laughs> <laughs> you all belong in a museum. What is a museum? <laughs> Are you calling me ancient? <laughs> I don't know. We got tossed by a literal dude who was around before the moon. So, yeah. As you guys leave the ruins area to get back to the plains area, you can, in the distance, see the ring rates uh, riding as fast as they can away from you. They're, they're, they're heading, they, they kind of curved a little. I, I don't know why I'm pointing them up. You can't see me pointing them up. Uh, they, they slightly <laughs> curve as they're going from north now westwards. They're going as this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so they kind of curve their path, and now it seems like that they're heading to Thorbad. Oh. They're making a lot of distance in a short amount of time. Yep. Well, see, they're so far away, uh, and, but close enough that you can see them. Uh, hopefully they don't turn around to look. <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, shall we get not, back on the objective. road? They're not going to care about us unless we do something to make them care, and I don't plan on doing that. Me neither. It's like it's almost as if the only thing they really care about right now is not going across the flowing river. Mm. Oh yeah, they don't like running water. Yeah. They're ghosts. <laughs> um Gary wants to know if we get back on the road. There's no road. Uh thing that we thought was a that uh, Gary thought was a road. Uh the, oh, the the plans, then. The <laughs> yeah, the you know the where the Nazgul just rode by at blazing speed on horseback. You know the thing. Yeah. Do we follow their so, tracks? You know, do we follow oh. where the horses were because it might be a better trail. Roll a survival check for that. That sounds really good for the ranger. That is a really. Yeah, I, I I also rolled the ranger, but I want to know what the dwarf does. Twelve. <laughs> the ranger says, "Yeah, that's a good idea. There's that path right there." <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> so the, the, there's like a clear like separation in the in the grass from with the, the the horses were going through them, but at the same time the. The, the path that the horses made is also trampled down. So, and it, it, what's really weird is it's almost as if that the grass died a little bit uh, from what they went through. Uh, so you, you can see a obvious clear path. Uh, and even more so because the ranger got a ridiculously high uh, survival check. So he's like pointing out to all you guys. And now that you see what he's pointing out, it's like, oh, yeah, I can see the I mean, path now. It's very easy to notice. Survival is kind of what they do, so. Exactly. So you follow that path, and it took you a day. Now that you have a very easy path, you go, and you finally turn, and you look in front of you, and something's not right. Because oh. the path then goes, and then ends, and you're looking up, and you can see that the mountain dips, but it's it doesn't slope up. You see like the ruins of like what looks like it used to be a road that's like super duper raised that's going south and uh, north, and then turns to go down, but then like it ends. But um, that's a cliff. Like it caved, caved in a rock slide and fell down a long time ago? Almost as if you were supposed to go through the mountain pass on the high road that's ruined. And it's almost as if there wasn't a actual straight path that would go up and in for a cart. You have to actually climb. Hmm. And, mm. and you remember... Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. 
Uh, yeah. Um, I think I think we could do that if we, so we each make, took some of can our we cure. Make for mm. Well, you know, we should probably consider what to do with the rest of the party because this is a big decision to leave the horse behind. Okay. Exactly. Well, yeah, but like, uh, it sounds like we kind of have to. But uh, uh, well, we question. took how high we is took, the cliff? We made a wrong turn, basically. So how, how high is the cliff? Is it? The the cliff is twenty feet high. It's not that high, but it's significant. Okay, I got a fix. Uh, let, let's let's make camp for the night, and uh, we'll implement it in the morning. So you make camp. You have a joyous time because Sigmund told all of you he got to cover it. He has a plan. I'm going to switch my infusions out and uh, swap my uh, uh, alchemist's jug for a rope of climbing. Rope of climbing. So the next day begins. Oh, short rest so I can... Regain health? No, long, I mean, long rest. rest. Sorry, I meant to say, I meant long, to say long. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> it is now the next morning. And okay. you see the 20 foot cliff that if it wasn't there, you would have been able to go into the mountain pass. And this was the warning that maybe that old man, the mayor, was trying to tell you guys. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to use my rope of climbing that I have uh, infused with uh, magical energy over the night. Okay. And uh, that is a uh, magic item uh, that is 60 feet long and can hold up to 3,000 pounds. Whoa! And uh, as a bonus action, I can command the other end of the rope from the one I'm holding to move toward a destination that I choose, and Ooh. it can move up to its maximum length away. And fasten oh, itself oh. securely to an object on the other end. Hold up. Yeah. What was that what, what was that what was that thing that thing we used, the pulley or whatever it was? Lock yeah. tackle? Yeah, could that be used to get the horses down or whatever? I put the magic item link in chat, by the way. Okay. Well, you can say that's like the, the rope has like this magical quality to it, but maybe in order because you are a little bit of an artificer that you're using the rope and pulley to assist in this. Yeah. But like, it's almost it, yeah. So well, you, you, basically, the thing is the rope can move, but you still have to move the things along the rope. That's what the tackle and pulley system would be for. Yep. Yeah. So, it's almost like magic. As you get up and almost. what do you do with the rope exactly? Uh, so, what exactly is the top of the cliff look like? The top of the cliff looks relatively flat, actually. It's like you, you actually don't see anything over, which implies that there's nothing that is obstructing the path. Once you get over the cliff. Okay, so there's nothing like to tie plateau. off. To. It's it's a plateau, like. There's nothing oh. to tie off to what you're saying then. Oh, oh is there, there a, tree. a, what, a tree. tree? You you got a tree. There's a tree there. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll then, give it to uh, you. I, then I will uh, tie off the rope to the tree. Uh, give, give it a firm yank, and uh, then we will begin uh, hitching up supplies uh, to the wagon and. Uh, me, being probably the lightest member of the party, will go up first. I will climb the rope. Okay, oh, so okay. We, oh, so are we at the bottom of the cliff or at the top of the cliff? I'm sorry. Bottom. We're at the bottom of the cliff. We're trying to get to the top of the cliff. Oh, okay. I see. So you... We're going uphill. All right. Mm-hmm. And just to see how much time it's going to take you, you will successfully do it, but do an athletics check. All right. I would be delighted to give you an athletics check. Uh, 
Uh, that'll be a 15. You're a spider monkey. It's like, at one point you're at the bottom, now you're at the top. Whoa. Impressive. Uh... Well, that says time and trees in the Shire are paid off, eh? What kind of check is it? Is it strength based? Uh, uh are you talking is about climbing? Based, uh, agility is dex based. Yeah. Uh, it, when, when it comes to climbing in general, that's just athletics. Okay. It, but but unless you have the climbing speed, then that's totally different. Oh man, yeah. I rolled really well, low for having a plus is... five. Yeah, climbing speed basically makes it so you just use it like a walking speed, but vertically. I rolled a nine. Follow him. Yeah, uh, the, the problem isn't that you're not a strong person. The problem is you're just heavy. <laughs> so you, you're, you're climbing, and it's like, ugh, ugh. Ugh. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, it's the carpet has barely any weight. Hey, it's hey, rope. hey, DM. Really long. Hey, DM, now that I'm on the top side of things, I can use the rope's ability to pull him up. Yes. So, uh, so, hey, so he's, hey, Barry, you don't weigh more than 3,000 pounds, uh, do ya? No, no, I don't. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm just so tired. In no Whoa! Way, you're suddenly up there. <laughs> 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 uh, just casually levitates up 10 feet at a time, like, clinging to the rope. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, startling. Uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, the, the other two also, well, well, probably should wait until after the guard, but I'll let you decide that. So now it's uh, you. Sorry about that. The internet cut out. out. So you got you, the Sigmund, Sigmund and Scary is up there. No, Felden needs the ranger needs to get up there, up the rope. So Felden uh, climbs up just really as have the easiest time, but I'm I'm just going to because I can. I'm going to just do the fairy service with like everything just to make it easier. Okay. Uh, like, just like have whoever's left at the bottom tie up all the supplies and like just mm -hmm. lift them up, untie them. Let the yep. rope back down. Like basically, like, we're carting everything we can up. Got it. So you do one item at a time. You also do the cart, I presume. And uh, does cart weigh more than three thousand pounds? No. That's a good question. That'd no, be a ton and a half. Weigh, then yes, we also move the cart up. And you also move the horse. And what's yeah. I want you to do an animal handle <laughs> check for the horse. You you can get the horse, but uh, just to see if the horse is uh, happy. Uh, I'd like I'm to gonna, uh, assist. That one. Okay, you, you you like pointing while you're assisting him with his uh, animal handling. Okay. Yeah, basically, I'm the crane operator. He's the one keeping the horse calm. I think Tim was suggesting that the ranger probably would be better at animal handling yeah. as well, and that we'd like uh, to assist him. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Say, Tim? I guess we can roll that or whatever for that. Saying. That is correct. Okay. Sorry, the internet cut out. That's why I'm on my phone now, and I'm waiting okay, for the Dawson. computer to get back on like it's supposed to. Oh, good. It's all right. So, so <sighs> what did you end up getting, uh, Tim? Well, we were, we were asking if uh, Eli's... I'm not going to check. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what no, I was trying no, to say. No. See, the, the thing is, I, I'm having Tim do the check because Tim is the one that's operating the rope. Yeah, but, like, I, I'm not the one trying to keep the horse calm for, like, most of it because that would be the one who's good with animals on the ground, like, okay. helping us get the supplies yeah. up. Well, um, unfortunately... Uh, if you really will... want me to make the check, I will, but, like... My, my understanding was I, I'm just focused on not dropping the thing. Okay. 
And he did that advantage. So, okay, good thing I, I did advantage because someone was helping him out. Uh, yeah, so the, the horse is calm while you, you drag him out. And and you, you also wrapped it around the horse enough so that way the horse was level. So yeah. the horse was level as he's going up. He's comfortable. You're not chafing the horse in any place you shouldn't. The, the horse uh, was just lifted up, and then when put to the side, he looked at you and, like, nibble at your hair a little bit. Yeah, like, uh, we basically did, like, a double figure eight to, like, uh, sort of hoist him up by his uh, sort of uh, leg joints mm -hmm. and, like, uh, keep his center of gravity up. <laughs> exactly. So he, he was comfortable. He didn't whine at all. He just waited. And once you were done, you were done. Most and patient now, horse ever. Oh, yeah. You, you guys were pretty high. Uh, so you got everything that you need that was below, now up, and you turn around, and what do you see before you? You see the Mount of Ash. You see the ruins. It's still there. But these ruins are not building ruins. These seems to be rubble from just big, giant pillars that's, like, on the ground everywhere. But you see a windy path before you. The thing is, you don't see clear across because the ruins is in the way. And as you walk forward and you turn the corner, what you see before you, you will find out next week. Ah, perfect. Nice. Perfect. Okay. Uh, utility character was such the right call for this game. Oh, yeah. Oh, All right. God. So now the question for me is figuring out who your enemy is going to be because next week it's going to be the battle session. 